Hello and welcome from the Bristly Stranger. We have come to something new. It's the early access beta of Dreadlands. Now I got this included in the Yogscast Humble Bundle. It is an open beta, so I think anyone can play it. I'll see if I can find a link. If I can, it will be in the description below. Obviously with early access, we have got stuff missing. They've got features that are coming, co-op, endless dungeon, base management upgrades, and the Scarback faction. They are one of the three playable factions, but obviously they're not in it yet. There is obviously going to be a full campaign as well, and there's also going to be more chapters in the campaign that we've got. We've got a bit to play. I have had a go with the two playable factions, and they're quite fun. I'm going to see if we can start again. We'll have a look at the introduction. I'm not sure when the beta is going to finish, but hopefully we'll be able to show off as much as possible before it does. They say we once walked amongst the stars, that we suffered greatly before finally reaching a golden age of peace and prosperity. It did not last. The downfall, the Unter Gang. A close call for our kind, but in time, we slowly rose from the ashes. New factions, cultures and belief arose from the scarred soil. The Dreadlands, a twisted and torn patchwork of contrasting terrain, is our home. It's the only known source of glow, the wondrous resource constantly fought over by the gangs of the Dreadlands. Scrappers, the short-fused riggers. Tribekin, the violent tree-huggers. And Scarbacks, the cybernetic newcomers. In fact, I think there's a tassel about to go down right now. Okay, so we're now on the gang selection screen. There are three different ones. Obviously, Scarbacks we know aren't in it. The Tribe King are kind of more of a nature-worshipping guys. We might have a run with those as well, but we are going with the Scrappers. There's quite a lot of history and background to the game. I obviously don't know much of it yet. But the High Plains Scrappers are different to normal Scrappers. They're a hot-tempered bunch of junk tinkerers, renowned for being able to turn a pile of scrap into a lethal weapon. They use their engineering skills and a combination of mines and poisons, as well as a whole bunch of other contraptions that they've invented. Now, if I was choosing out of all three, I would probably be choosing these anyway. I really like the background behind these. If we do create a gang, we get to customise it, we have to have a leader, but the other options, we get some starting cash and we can recruit any gang members we like. We will be starting with the default gang, that's fine. We're just going to move in to the first mission now. Mission, Glow Hunt. There's glow in these parts, you can smell it. The wandering trader that owed you a favour wasn't lying. Now all you have to do is go and get it first, where glow sprouts gangs come a look in. A simple fact of life. Ah, there they are. Time to get rid of the competition. The glow's yours and yours alone. So, Junk Devil Sappers. That's ours. We obviously are going to get lots of tutorials. I'm going to switch them off for now. So, it's given us a random bunch of guys. We have got the top guy up here and Got another up here it randomly names them they're gonna have random traits as well it works a lot like XCOM so you each have two actions if you do an attack action it ends your go well the go of that person anyway we've got things on the train like explosive barrels there are also loot on different bits of it we are just gonna move up um, I think we are going to run this guy over to here. Right, it's going to end his go. We can switch between our guys just by pressing the spacebar. We can switch to the enemy just by pressing tab. 
Uh, there's a little goon there, another one over there, and another one up there. So we've got three goons by the looks of it. Yeah. We can press F to jump back to our guy. Down here, we've got a little tick against the guy that's already activated, and the other one is still to move. Now, up here would be a nice place, but it's quite close to the barrels. I think you have to be very close to be able to be caught in the blast. I think I'm going to run him over to the other one, keep them together. Now this scrapper tank, he's like a normal dude, but he is a lot tougher. We're going to end the turn and let the goons move towards us. So the Whiskey Moor bombers, you can see their health a lot lower, they're just basic goons. They're good cannon fodder though, they're cheap. We can get a few of them for the same cost as a tank hopefully we will be able to take them out now this game it reminds me a lot of necromunda i don't know if anyone's been watching mordheim that is the old world version of mordheim <laughs> of mordheim of necromunda you have a gang you go in there is valuable loot that you're trying to get what? and you have to fight the other gangs for control over it this it's obviously got a very similar feel to it but i think they've done enough backstory and all of their kind of history to build their own wall and make it different enough obviously the concept of gangs fighting each other it's not that hard now he's come and melee locked us if we're in combat we can't shoot and we also can't be shot now Fortunately, he did no damage to our tank there. Uh, he might have hit our armour. Yes, we've took one damage on our armour. Uh, and again, we've took one damage there. Now this back guy, he's no longer in combat. So we could, if we wanted, sneak round here and just open up on him. It's a 90% chance we're basically still in the open. We're flanking him, which means we're doing extra damage because we're shooting him in the back. Now, ammo is persistent. We've got 15 rounds, this is a burst weapon, so it fires three shots. So technically it's got five shots in it. We can reload with the reload action, but this is also a finite resource. It's just kind of standard bullets, but it reloads one weapon once. So the other guy, his gun's got three bullets, three shots, and it reloads the same. He has got some ammo as well actually but it's better to use your bigger guns with your ammo obviously once guns run out they don't recharge at the end of the battle so you do have to kind of watch how much ammo uh, we are going to shoot this guy though we're not going to chat about it too much now he is pinned that means he goes down he only gets one action on his next go it can be an attack action so he could charge us maybe but he is bleeding so that happens at the end of his turn. So he is pretty much gone. Uh, this guy, if we move away, they're going to get free attacks. So we are going to... This guy's facing us. This guy looks like he's facing away. So I think we'll hit him. Yeah, he's took two damage and he's bleeding now. We'll skip on. The Whiskey Moors get their go. Obviously, the first one's pinned, so he just becomes unpinned for some reason. They use a special ability? No, he entered me like Now, there's a bit of a bug there. He stood on his mate. Obviously, early access. We're going to see a few little bugs. We're getting a couple of hits here, though. I'm not too happy about that. Now, this glowing here means he's done two attacks, and his next attack will be an automatic critical. Uh, yeah, he's done the same. Our tank, he's locked against three guys. Uh, the first one's bled to death and gone down, though. Uh, I'm not sure why the other ones didn't. Ah, he did. So this little symbol, that means they're down. Just because they're down doesn't mean they're out. They're also they're below the threshold, so they're probably going to run away. So if there was any loot, this would be the time to make sure we grab it. Uh, we are not going to use our gun. Well, we can't because he's in combat. We can switch weapons. Uh, he's got a chopper, that's a pretty good weapon. We'll charge this back guy. We're hitting him in the back. Got a good chance of hitting him. He's down straight away. 
because we've hit him with kind of extra attacks, we execute him, which means he's not down, he's out. Doesn't mean he's necessarily dead. Uh, we can stay, we can follow up, obviously. Um, now we are critical there. The other guy, he can also do the same. Because they're already down, we might as well execute one of them. Uh, we will take some blood damage. I'm not sure if that's persistent or not. We'll have to check that out afterwards. But we will execute one of them for the XP. Excellent. So he's gone. We will uh, stay where we are. Now, he has dropped some loot. It is a free action to pick up loot. So we can have a go. Ten credits. We'll definitely take that. Thank you very much. So we don't necessarily want to end our turn instantly. If we've got any free actions like that, it's a free action to switch weapon or reload. Obviously not a free action to overwatch. But picking up loot, we definitely don't want to miss that. We'll end our turn. He's going to bleed, but we're okay with that. He's kind of on less than half health, but that's all right. The Whiskey more Bombers, he's down, so he can't do anything. It's a morale test and it's all hashed out, so they're automatically going to fail. We do have like a coloured area. If they land in the coloured area, they're okay. But we have slaughtered them and it's time to take our glow back to our headquarters. Glow. A material so valuable, it forms the base of the entire Dreadlands economy. Its raw form offers only a tiny fraction of the enigmatic material's potential. To unlock the true power of glow, it needs to be refined. A capability only possessed by three rival corporations. Impetus, the scions of the city. Junction, the hardened survivors and senescent glory, the totalitarian cult. Towering to the northwest sky spire, a forbidden city. A city whose highest towers are home to reclusive gods, all powerful, enigmatic, and feared. The spire gods are worshiped by the ministry the dominant religion in the area. But the Dreadlands is not ruled by anyone. It's a constant war with itself, fueled by the discordant nature of the innumerable gangs. So go on, hurry back to your hideout with your newfound glow, lest a bigger dog in the pound wrest it from your grasp. So we are back at the hideout. This is the base of operations in Dreadlands. We have unlocked the barracks so we can view our fighters and change our equipment round at there. Obviously, we're in tutorial mode, so a lot of it, like the tactics and recruit, is locked at the minute. We can head over and have a look at the barracks, though. Now, I don't know if you noticed, on the map, we have the rest of our gang just hanging around. Over here it shows the limits, so rust blades, we can have two of them, we've got zero at the minute. They're kind of like special close combat guys. Scrapper tanks, we know we've got one of those. Yeah, we kind of know what they do. They're kind of like big, tough guys, they've got more health, generally more armor as well. We have a limited number. Scrappers, they're kind of the foot soldiers of the scrapper gang. We can have more of those. Scrapper hounds, they're melee only, but they're cheap. So if you need numbers, you can take a couple of scrap hounds and they're going to definitely give you the edge. Goons, again, they're not brilliant, not got a lot of health. We saw them go down fairly easily in that fight, but they are also cheap. Lastly, we have bounty hunters. Now, they are super strong. They cost 50 credits and it's only for that one battle. You have to pay them every time you want to use them. That's fine though, we can zoom into our guys and have a look at their different things. As you can see, as we zoomed in, our weapon is still on 12 ammo. 
so we've still got four shots in it. We have got a frag grenade, now they're super good, but again, this is consumable. We have got one frag grenade. We've also got ammo that will reload the gun back up to 15, which is good. We've got some traits over here. We have got leader, obviously. Aldous, he's our leader. So we only get one leader. While he's alive, we are getting bonus to morale. He has also got rat catcher. Now, we've got a special ability called bomb rats. It appears on our tactic cards, so we don't always get it. Now, because we've got this, we always get one extra rat. Now, I think this is kind of fixed. I'm not sure if it will be fixed in the full game, but obviously it's fixed in the demo. Maybe you only get two bomb rats normally. It always seems to be three. It does say we get one extra. Maybe it just automatically upgrades it to three. We've also got a trait, he's a thoroughbred, his parents were scrappers, his grandparents were scrappers, so on and so on. So he has been a scrapper forever. But he has become a high plane scrapper. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between a high plane scrapper and a normal scrapper is, but he's damn proud of his home and heritage and he will fight for that and that will give him some different options in the dialogues. If we scroll through, we can look at our different guys. Here's our hound. As you can see, the rating, a lot lower. That's because he's a lot cheaper. It looks like XP is 40 for a level up on anyone. The dog, obviously, it's only got a bite. But we can see it does two damage and plus two on a crit. We've got all of the different things over here. So dogs are slightly faster. Their melee is okay. Their range is one because they're biting. Armor, he hasn't got any armor. I think we can equip him with armor but I'm not entirely sure. His trait, unknown. He's just a dog. We've found him somewhere. We have got a goon here. Now, he has got some traits as well. He's a scrapper survivor. Now, I'm not sure what the backgrounds do, but they are quite in-depth, so they all do different things. He's also got another trait. He's a drug addict. So, I think if we do have encounters with drugs, it will affect Sage here. Eve's got some ammo as well. He's got five shots in his stub gun. It is a pistol, so it's quite short range. But actually, ammo with him, that is pretty good. We can just drag it down here to our gang inventory and give it to somebody else. But I think, Sage, yeah, you can keep your ammo for now. Uh, Glenn, he's just our ordinary scrapper. He's got a bandage, which will obviously help us heal up. It does one health it can pick people up that are downed and it can stop them bleeding it's got some ammo as well he's only got three shots in his scrap gun it's three damage plus two on a crit so that's not too bad decent range as well he's got cloth armor well rags it's better than nothing which is what the goon had i think he's a scrapper survivor so kind of the same as we've already seen he's also paranoid so that will definitely give us some different options in dialogues and he's stalwart so he's solid and dependable maybe that means he won't run away as much i don't know if we go through quickly now we've got jared here his armor is already damaged i'm not sure how we repair that i haven't quite got that far in the game i've only just checked it's running he is a thoroughbred so he's a scrap through and through he's a cop key braggard so he might shoot his mouth again this might cause some different dialogue options and he's got pain tolerant so that's pretty good i don't know whether this gives us bonuses to being hurt or not so at the minute all we can do in our hq we can go to the barracks or we can go and talk to spark now he's kind of the captain of our crew we can't really control him but he can give us special jobs let's go over to him right now and see what he's got to say or are you? Enough of whatever you're doing or not doing, because I've had it with this tedium. Just look around. See? Slow, slow and boring. I want action and huge helpings of it. I've got a plan, you see. Oh, the sweetness it'll bring. All the lovely little tinkery things. Fine drinking. Well, you bloody well know, don't you? Mm -hmm. A plan say oh laddie do I have a plan the grandest of plans but if you think I'll give it away in one scoop you're sorely mistaken 
One step at a time, laddies. Can't have some talent pinned fella pinching it. Who the heck? Aye. Glow as cheap as dirt compared to Spark's grand plan. <laughs> right, where do we begin? Sorry. Yeah, begin with a sweep round our neck of the woods. That disgusting lead flex crew has been spotted prowling all ends. Intolerable! <laughs> Teach them, Fetbooks, there's a price to pay for fiddling around in our backyard. Hmm. Alright, consider it done. So there we go. We've got our first mission, it's tedium. Our captain sent us out, patrol our lands, find the lead flex, give them a kick in and send them on their way. We get some rewards if we manage to complete our objective, 50 credits, and also some flak armor. Excellent stuff. Objective, quite simple, just kill them. So we have accepted that we can wander about, but of course there's not a lot to look at. The only other thing that we can look at is the shop. So we've got Ovin here in Weird Incorporated. He's a traveling trader. He restocks in three missions time. I think that's only core missions. I think if we do like little scraps, they don't actually count. He's got a ton of stuff, ammo, very good. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna buy anything at the minute. We have got this spit gun here. Now it's 75 bucks, so we can't buy it at the minute, but it's upgraded. It looks like it does exactly the same damage, but it has got an extra trait called Ammo Hoarder. Now I'm not entirely sure what that does. Obviously, still learning the game at the minute, but I think that'll be a good thing to save our money and buy when we get back. So we have got something else we can go to. We can go to the exit here, or we can just click exit. This is the same on just about any location. If you don't want to wander around and find the exit, you can just click exit and it takes you straight out. And that puts you on the world map. Now here's our little hideout, the Junk Devil Sapper's hideout. Down here, we've got a little tool tip pointing us towards our contract. We can have a look at our gang at any time and we can have a look at the world map. So on the world map, this is kind of random, it does change every time. The location, so Glowbound here, that is a settlement. We can go there to get missions or even trade. That has been in numerous different places, as I've kind of played. Typhus Grove, that's where we're starting. I have started on the other side of the map before, so this isn't fixed. So there is a lot of replayability to the game. Obviously, we are heading out towards our objective. We just click on the map and we can head in any direction we want. So we don't even have to go to here. We can check the map and head to one of these settlements. Uh, we have got the lead flex just here though. If we hover over it, we can see it's a level one. The mission, that's the kind of game that we're playing. It's just a gang war and the enemy lead flex. There's only three of them and that can affect how many gang members we can use. If we head straight there, now as we zoom in we can see the mission again, we can see the enemies, and we can also see how many there are. We also get a bonus drop, so I think we get scrap metal for completing this. There might even be loot on the map. We also get a little bit of text at the bottom there, just as flavour, telling us about the gang that we're facing. Having spotted the lead flex prancing around our territory, you prepare to take them down. Weapons up. We have to defeat the enemy gang. There we go, we'll get our verses come up there. We get to select our gang members now. If we click on our tank, uh, we, we can't actually see how much health he's on. So I don't know whether his health is persistent or not. I'm gonna keep him because he's really tough. Uh, we're going to take our Scrapper, because he's the next best, I think, and obviously our boss. We'll confirm this. Now, ammo, definitely, that is persistent. So I'm hoping that the health has healed up. We also get a choice of tactics cards. Now, these do a one-off special effect. Click, extremely good. We can just make one of their guns stop working. Now, if they've got junk on them, I think they can use that to repair their gun. 
Adrenaline Rush, very good, gives us one extra action. Whiskey Shot, I'm not so good. It is like a plus one to weapon skill, but minus one to range skill. So it can make you good in melee, but not so good in range, and it lasts two turns. I think we'll replace that. And also, Toxic Rust Heal, yeah, we've got someone that could be injured, but there are downsides. We could contract rust sickness. I'm not entirely sure what that does, but I certainly don't want it. So we're going to replace that. We confirm we have got uh, on your feet, picks up downed ally and auto repair. Okay. So they are deploying. There they are. Uh, we are deployed here. We can change things about. Now, these things, we can climb up the vines and stand on top. There's not a lot of cover up there, but I think being above your target does kind of give you a plus to be able to shoot. I'm just going to move all three of them quite close together. We can have a look around the map. So just here, we've got a glowing box. Now that is loot, so we might head over in that direction. Uh, we're going to ready up though and start the first round. So. Uh, looking at the health, yes. The health, it's back up, but his armor has obviously gone. Uh, we're going to run him over there. We, in fact, we've got more loot. Excellent. Uh, so we definitely want to run in that direction. Is that loot as well? No, it's just some bugs or something. Um, I think we are going to run over to here. We're not actually in cover, but they're quite far away. Uh, our boss... Can't quite get there. We're going to run to hit just in case. I don't want to take a lucky hit. Uh, that's the end of our turn, though. We can see there are four of them, actually. Uh, so they've got two scrappers and two goons. So we're slightly outmatching them. If we kill their leader, they are going to take a big morale hit as well. So, obviously, that is kind of a focus. I don't know keeping our eye out for loot as well. Sometimes, at the end of matches, you do get like extra bonus time to be able to loot the map. But I'm not sure if you need a trait to be able to do that or what. We're going to move out to here. We're going to pop this scrap metal into our backpack. Now you do have inventory space, so obviously that is something to be aware of as well. Uh, this guy He's going to wait there. He is actually going to overwatch. Now, like I said, you can be flanked. Being hit in the back, very bad. We can change our facing. Well, you can do this at any way. But obviously, we want to change our facing in this direction for overwatch. Uh, we're going to put him there. I don't think we're going to need it, to be honest. Our tank, we're going to move him up to there. We are going to grab the loot for free. Uh, credits and medical supplies. Now, I don't think we kept our credits from the first one. Bit of a shame, but that's okay. We're going to run him back, and we are going to... Oh, he's a bit slow. Do you know what? We're just going to run up there, and I'll go. I think they're still far enough away for it not to matter. Uh, that will be the end of our turn, though. What are they doing? Hopefully, they're just running forward. <laughs> Taking some time to think about it. Yeah, there's their boss. He's creeping up on us, or trying to. He's not really in cover from us, I don't think. He has got that cover symbol, but I think if we attack him from the other side, it's not going to help him. Uh, this guy, he's well back here. And he's staying back there. That is fine by me. So, uh, this guy here... Uh, we can right click on him actually, and he's got a spit pistol, that is burst, it's got three shots, it does quite considerable damage, um, so I think we're going to come out of this, uh, he has got, he's got a spit gun, okay, uh, so Bly, your gun is going to go click and no longer work, so his gun's jammed, he can no longer use it. From here, we've got a 75% chance of shooting him as well. He's got armor, so he might not take that much damage. But rather than break cover ourselves, we could move over to here. It's only half cover. This is full. Yeah, I think we'll just stay here and shoot him. Uh, 
we missed and pinned him so we did hit the armor so that's okay and this guy yeah let's just move over to this side uh, we cannot really see anyone okay if we move to, oh, we can't do it when we're running that's fine let's just aim it over here we can overwatch um, he if we go to a white area we can see lines there and it tells us a percent chance to hit from that area so if we move over to there yeah we've got a 50 percent on the boss but not really much else uh, from where we are we can only see him i think we are going to overwatch here as well and we're going to end the turn we're going to let them come in the boss is pinned and jammed so he can't move very quickly yeah, he's going to move up to there. I think he's in the open now. He might shoot at us. No, he is running up. Overwatch gets a shot. Oh, he's missed. Oh well. Now, he carries on. If we hit him, his move ends. Uh, he's moving up. We don't know what the other guy is doing. He doesn't want to stay back there. There's no way he can hit us. No, he is moving up too. Okay. So they're nicely spaced out. So what we could do is just charge them. Uh, we've got a 50% chance to hit. I don't know whether we can charge that far. Yep, 75% chance. Uh, that might be worth it actually. Um, with our boss, I think we are gonna do just that. We are gonna charge this guy. 90%, smash him down. Yeah, he's downed. He's executed. He's out. Um, we are going to stay where we are. So we're a tiny bit away. We have got loot here. Um, we have got some ammo. We're definitely taking that. And we have got... 5% chance. Do you know what? He's not got a gun. So he was going to be coming to us. Ah, uh, we missed twice. Um, we... I kind of charge with our other scrapper while we're locked in combat they can't get us he's got 90 percent he's better that whiskey does look better now uh we're gonna follow up that puts us in cover and puts him nicely out there locked in combat as well we're gonna hmm, do you know what we don't want to pick somebody up but we can adrenaline rush this guy here uh we are going to Smash their leader again. He's now bleeding. Excellent. Uh, we are. We could do auto repairs to clear our jammed weapons, but obviously we're not jammed. They are. We're going to end the turn. Lead flex. What are you doing? He's locked in combat. He's fighting back against our weaker guy. Okay, his armor's gone and he's a little bit wounded. This guy, he's probably going to charge. He is. He missed. He hit twice. Wow. Uh, lots of damage. Now we don't get to fight back because he knocked us back. This guy, he's going to move up. Is he going to get a shot on our boss? No. Okay. Now he's bled to death, so he's down. Our boss, I think we're going to charge this little guy. They're nearly gone. We're doing a critical hit. He is dead. He is also executed. Uh, we are going to follow up. Can we loot the square we're on? Yes, we can. Ammo and credits. Excellent. We're definitely taking that. Um, the boss, if we execute him, we might be able to take him out as well. Uh, we can charge that one. Can we charge him with the other one? I don't think we can. Uh, so actually, he is going to come in here, execute this guy. He possibly would have bled to death, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, we're going to stay where we are just in case we block the path. This guy, he is going to charge him. Make sure we don't get any shots. I oh, missed. He hit that time, though. Um, we could lock him in combat. Uh, do you know what? We are going to stay where we are. We're going to allow him to move off. I think we're going to end turn as well. Now, obviously, we take a little bit of bleed damage, but that is okay. He is going to have to have a morale check. Now, 
he's got a fairly good chance, but he has failed. It was better than 50-50, but he is gone. So that makes us victorious. Excellent. So, contract is complete. We've defeated the rival gang. We've got to return to Spark at our hideout and we can claim our reward. We also get a breakdown of the match. Our man of the match was Glenn, so he gets an extra plus 5 XP. Very good. He did get a bit of a whack himself, but obviously he did a lot of killing. We got some bonuses. We got both of the bonuses, actually. We got Killer. This is for the fighter that kills the most enemies, minimum of two. And we also got Wrecker. Um, done the most damage overall. Now, Aldous, he got both, but he didn't get Man of the Match. I'm not entirely sure how that worked out. It could even be random. We can have a look at the fighter's stats for everybody that's in. We've got the names all down the side here. We've got how much XP they got. So Glenn, he got eight. I'm not sure if that includes the bonus or not. This 17, I should imagine that includes the bonus. Uh, Glenn only did one damage. Ah, but Aldous, he downed two people. So we're back on the map now. We can see our hideout is back up in that direction. This is destroyed. We didn't see any other location. Sometimes you can get randomly attacked by creatures on the map. And sometimes we come across layers of other things. It can be mutant creatures. It can be rival gangs. Uh, there are settlements, like I said. Here's our hideout, though. We're all the way back. Whenever we enter a location, we always get the chance to leave rather than going in if we've clicked on it by mistake. But obviously, we want to get back to the hideout. So we have now unlocked the ability to recruit new guys. Excellent. So to do that, we just click on it. We go over there. Yep, we now get a whole list of things. We've got 54 credits. It shows you how much each thing costs. Goons are the cheapest all the way up to the leader, 230. But obviously we can't buy another leader because we're at our maximum of one of one. I'm not going to recruit anything at the minute. We are going to finish our quest with Spark. So obviously to do that, we just go and click on his question mark. Ah, laddies. Heard you show those lily-livered dobber jobs what's what? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we did, yeah. Mm. Oh, I know you did good stuff. Uh -huh. Ah, well done, laddies. Coin to plan. I'll let you know when it's time. Is right for the next step. And obviously we get a recap for the mission as well. So we've defeated it. We've got 50 extra credits and we've also got some flak armor. We probably want to stick that on one of our guys. That's really good stuff. Now we have got another mission here. We have also got scrap up here and medical supplies. No glow at the minute. That's fine though. I think medical supplies, they're for picking up dead people. We haven't had any yet, so we got lucky and scrap repairs our goods. Now we can obviously pick up another mission here. I'm not gonna do that just yet. I think we are gonna leave it here and we'll get our mission at the start of the next episode I do want to do some more of this, I'm not sure when the open beta closes, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and record these, but if you have enjoyed it, do leave those comments. Obviously, I've played games like this before, any advice or anything that you see that I've missed, drop that in the comments, always great to hear. Even if I have already recorded the next one, it might come in for the one after that. If you have enjoyed it, do leave those likes and make sure you do subscribe that way you won't miss the next one but for now i've been the bristly stranger thanks so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time